on the shark bite, which number numbers do we want to see you do? Go over and have questions about. Two, three, five. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I saw ones, I saw twos, um, I saw four, and five. And some of these can be done with those ones. So let's start to go through them. Number one, you have to distribute, but distribute twice. So 6x times negative 2x would give us what? Negative 12x. The x one over change. And then 6x times 3, so positive 18x. Negative 5 times negative 2x, positive 10x. And negative 5 times positive 30, negative, and then combine your electrons. The only thing that you could do to check to see is this right, is um, put both in decimals and see if they overlap. that they overlap exactly at the same places and that's how you know you would have done that right. But otherwise you would have to do the work yourself. Um, two, we can double check in decimals afterwards. Actually, so I'm going to type it in as is. Um, remember, if you're trying to do this in Desmos, you need capital X's and capital Y's, which I'm going to type in over here. That's correct. I didn't change this. Um, it's six C seven A B. I'll change that. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna add in sliders. Change these to both. Change these both to different numbers, and then someone tell me the answer you got, and we'll see if it's correct. Notice. We're only at uh, number two. Correct. Negative 4x minus 2y. Those numbers match. So if you got that, that was your correct answer. If you did not get that, go back and double check. You may miss the negative or positive or add, incorrectly added something. Um, someone had a question on three, and the points that are not solutions, zero, three, and five, one. Zero, three isn't a solution because it falls on the dashed line. Right, for number four, we're going to do that one in Desmos. So 
So we're looking for an equation of this line. So algebraically, you would have to use your point slope. But if I plot the point and I plot my y equals mx plus b, make those both sliders, and I change the m to the m we were given, negative 3 over 2. Then we just have to move the b until it goes through 4, negative 1. 5 is what that was supposed to be. So then the equation should be y equals negative 3 over 2 x plus 5. And those overlap. So anytime you see a question that asks about what the equation of the line is, use this. Type in y equals mx plus b, add in the sliders, change your slope, put in the point, change your b value until you get the equation. Or get the, uh, until it goes through, and then you can get your equation. Questions about any of those so far? The last one you have to graph. And I'm going to put it in Desmos so you can see what it looks like. So it should be a solid line. Use your minus up, use your slope. And it should be shaded below it. So if yours does not look like that, make sure it does. Solid line, not dashed. Once you have that written down, go ahead and pass your answer sheets up. So back tables, pass yours up to the front. Find the page that looks like this. Some of this will feel familiar to you because we kind of did dividing polynomials already, but we were doing dividing monomials by monomials, not polynomials by polynomials. So multiple by one. So we have to remember our exponent rules when we do this. So for number one, you can think about this like two separate pieces. If you want to separate it to make that more visible, you can do that where you're taking each term and dividing it by whatever the denominator is. And there are two ways to go about doing this, so I'm going to show you both. <coughs> so if we do it this way, what would this first one be? And the second one? What you could also do, since we've talked about factoring, is what do these have in common? So we could divide 4 out of both of them, and if we did, what would be left? So we would be factoring out the 4 like we've done, finding the GCF, but it would still be written in this form, but then these two 4s would cancel, just leaving the GCF. So whichever method you like better, do that. It'll be the same either way. The only difference is when it doesn't work out nicely, but we'll do an example like that. Okay, questions on that before we continue? For number two, um, again, you can do it either way. I'll do this one both ways, and then for the rest, we'll choose. 
if we're dividing or separating it into two separate pieces, we have 2t squared over t minus 9t over t. So what would that give us? What would that simplify to be? And if you want to do it the factoring way, what do these have in common? Usually whatever the denominator is what they have in common, but not always. So that will leave us with 2t minus 9, and the t's would cancel. Number three, do we want to do factoring method or the splitting method? Factoring, okay. So for number three, what could we factor out of the numerator? 5t. What would be left? So then that would be your answer. So if you do it the factoring way, you still have to write it out that is over whatever it started with. That way you can show that you canceled them out. We're gonna do a couple more of these and then try one that doesn't work out so nicely. Um, let's skip down to five. Factoring method or splitting method. So if we're doing the splitting method, and if you want to do the factoring method instead for this one, that's fine. 8a squared b all over ab plus 3ab squared all over ab. What would this first one be? And the second one? Um, let's skip again and go to 7. Splitting or factoring? Splitting. Okay. So if we're splitting this one, 7a to the 5th, b to the 4th, plus 49a to the 4th, b to the 5th, each over 7a squared b. And then the last one we'll do by factoring. What do those have in common? Nine. And then how many A's, how many B's? A to the third, B to the third. So if we divide that out of each piece, what would be left? So those all worked out nicely. I'm going to give you an example that doesn't. 
Somewhere where you have space, I want you to write down this example. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you the splitting method of this first. And then we'll go back and do the factoring method. For these type, and you won't know this until you try it, um, the splitting method is better for this. Divide each piece by 3x squared y to the third. Some of these are going to work out nicely and some of them aren't. So this first one would be what? Those would have to become 1, those would have to become 1, but then y squared. Okay. Here, our variables are bigger in the denominator, so we're going to end up with negative exponents and have to change those. So let's take this step by step. 9 divided by 3 would give us 3. 1 minus 2 would give us, I'm um, sorry, not negative 2, negative 1. I'll change it here in a second. 1 minus 3 would give us y to the negative second. Keeping how we did that middle one in mind, what would the third term be? Okay, so anything with the negative, we're going to make that a fraction. Because both of these have negatives, they're both going to go in the denominator, x and y squared. The x does not have a negative, so it's going to go in the numerator. That would be your answer. It doesn't look nice. Not as nice as our other answers, but that would be your answer. Just, that's it. That's it. That's all. Now, I'm going to show you the factoring method. And that one's a little bit more work. <clears throat> what would that have in common? Three. How many x's? How many y's? One x and y. So what would be left if we divided each of these by 3xy? you're going to end up doing is, like we did before, still putting it over the denominator, but then you want to simplify the factor out the GCF and the denominator. Simplify this, what would it become? Two. Just the outside fraction, don't worry about the parentheses yet.
you may have negative exponents. Y squared is better. Minus 3x. Not minus 3x. <coughs> mm -hmm. It would be x to what power? You're subtracting the exponent. Oh. So 1 minus 2 would give us mm. negative, negative one. 1. Sorry, it's okay. So then we have to make this into a fraction, so y squared over x. Then we have to multiply it back. <coughs> so this would be x, y to the 6 over x. look back at that um, because that should have worked out to be the same but it didn't for some reason regardless when the numbers don't match up the denominator and the factor don't match up the Um, but as I was saying earlier, the factoring method with these takes longer. So I would say if you start to factor something out and it doesn't look right, like it's not matching up, it's not going to simplify nicely, go back and erase and start over and try the separating splitting method. Questions on that? The last thing we have to talk about is polynomial division, where we have a polynomial divided by a binomial, so find that page. And we'll do a few of these and then we'll have time to practice. So here we have to remember all of our factoring rules, factor our numerator using the rules, and then divide. So let's start with 1. So this is a trinomial 
Anyone remember the rule for a basic trinomial? have this one here and these are rules that you have to remember. If you're looking for two numbers that multiply to be six but add to be five. It's I think it's one of the first three two. Oh I was looking through two and three would work. When you have a basic trinomial, you can put your answers in your factors immediately. So x plus 2 and x plus 3. You're going to rewrite it over whatever it was dividing. Then when you see any like factors, you're going to cancel them out. And whatever's left in your answer. Questions on that one? We're going to do at least one of each type of factoring problems we have here. Um, so number three, does the numerator have a GCF? Something you could divide each of these by. What? Two. So if we took out the two, what would be left? So then the inside piece, what's inside the parentheses, is the same as what we were just doing. You're looking for two numbers that multiply to be 1, but add or subtract to be negative 2. What two numbers would work? If they're both negative. have 2 and then x minus 1, x minus 1, all over x minus 1. The x minus 1 in the denominator would only cancel with one of the factors, not both. So your final answer you could leave like this, 2 times x minus 1, or you could simplify it, distribute, and say 2x minus 2. There are two x minus one. Correct. But only one gets canceled. Okay. Other questions on that one? Four. Do we have a GCF we can pull out of the top, the numerator? No. So in this one, you're multiplying six and five. Looking for two numbers that multiply to be 30, but add to be 13. What two numbers work? Oh, and, and, three. and then three works in this one. So then you're going to rewrite it into four terms. So you may need more space for this. 6x squared plus 13x, nope, not 13, plus 10x plus 3x plus 5, all over 2x plus 1. Keep bringing down whatever your denominator is. It'll get tedious, but that way you know at the end you're supposed to be dividing and not just factoring. Right? And then you can split the middle. Because now we're grouping. What do these first two have in common? Two, two and two. x. So if we divide that out of the first two, what's left? Three x. Oh, not three x. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, three x. Sorry, I wrote six two and six. <laughs> okay. Uh, three x plus five. Yes, that's. What could we divide out of the last two? 
1. So if nothing is always 1, so it means the ends are going to stay the same. And then you can rewrite it. Your factors on top would be 2x plus 1, 3x plus 5, all over 2x plus 1. So then if we cancel our like factors, what's left? So with these problems, one of your factors should cancel out. If they don't, you may have did your math incorrectly. So double check that. What questions do we have so far? We're going to do two more problems in a bit. Two more problems, and I'm going to show you how to do this in Douglas. I'm going to end up um, For six, this is already a grouping problem. So we're just going to continue grouping. Split the middle. What did the first two have in common? One and squared. If we divide that out, what's left? What did the second two have in common? N, positive N. And if we divide that out, what's left? So then if we rewrite our factors, M squared plus N, 4M minus 1, all over M squared plus N, what would be left when we cancel? Seven's going to be the last one we do. Anyone remember how to factor this numerator? M squared minus nine. Squares. One will be three. We need two factors left. How would you write it? Oh, um, n minus three and n. So then our final answer would be. So if you're good with factoring, you're really good with this. Okay. Um, I am going to show you in Desmos how you can check this. And some of you already figured that out when you were working in the test nav last class. I was looking at something. Okay. Um, you can continue working in the test nav after I do this. If you would like, if you'd rather do Khan Academy, you can work on that. Or you could be working on the SOL A. 6C, 7A, B, but let me show you this first. Um, for any of these problems, I'm just going to pick a random one from this back page. I'm going to do 12 on this very last page. You can put this in Desmos and look and see what would be left. And then usually it will be multiple choice, so let me not actually do that one. Let me do one of the ones that's actually multiple choice. Um, there's an SOL practice page. I'll do number one. So for 
that number one when it's asking which is a factor, if I were to put in the answer choices, 4x minus 5, 5x minus 4, 4x plus 5, 5x plus 5. The factor is going to be whichever goes your x value of whatever the original is. So without solving this, I can say that 4x plus 5 is going to be my answer. It's the only one that goes through my original at my x and my sub. So the same thing can be said for 2. For all of your problems that are dividing, it's going to give you a line. So if I said I have something that was dividing in order to check yourself. You can put that in. It's going to give you a line. And you can look at what that line is. That line will help you uh, figure out your answer or see if your answer is correct. All right, so you can be using this time for practice. Um, any of the things I mentioned before work together. Let me know if you have questions. Need my help.